What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So I found a small issue on the JK that if we don't fix, it's gonna turn into a much bigger disastrous problem. So I think this is gonna be a very common issue across Jeeps, especially JKs and JLs possibly. So the reason I'm making this video is to show you guys what to look out for how to fix it, or at least how I'm gonna fix it, and kind of the reason behind it. But let me go ahead and get under the Jeep so I can show you guys what we're actually looking for on our Jeeps. Before we crawl under the Jeep, I wanna ever talk real quick about upgrades. So everybody always talks about upgrading things, and that is great. Upgrade your tires, upgrade your control arms, upgrade your lift, upgrade your control arm brackets, upgrade to long arms, upgrade to one-ton axles, upgrade your skid plates. You guys get where I'm going. There's a ton of upgrades you can do to a Jeep, but in the end, are all these upgrades really working together and help supporting each other? In my case, I found one spot where it's just not happy. So most of you guys know, I did the Super Duty axle swap. So one ton axle swap, long arms, just put this skid plate on, and of course, a heavy duty cross member. Now on the JKs, the factory cross member, there's no long arms attached to it. Its sole purpose is to support the transmission and the uh, transfer case back there. Now unfortunately, the factory Jeep cross member is extremely thin. It's about as thin as that factory bracket right there, an eighth inch. That's the issue that we're gonna address. Now the factory cross member is super thin, so people will upgrade to a heavy duty thick cross member, or they'll upgrade to one that has provisions for long arms incorporated into it. Max really wants me to throw his frisbee. Let me go do that real quick. All right. So a big upgrade is to upgrade to a thicker cross member. So if you smash it on a rock, it's not gonna bend. And if you wanna run long arms, you can incorporate it into there. Now the issue is that we have upgraded our cross member. We have put an additional amount of weight on the cross member by the 6.4 Hemi and the eight speed. And we've also added another type of like horizontal load to it by introducing these long arms into it. So what that did at one point cracked this bolt hole. So it, it's really dirty under here, sorry guys. But I can tell this has been there for a while because the crack is still a little rusty. So that means it didn't happen on this last trip like out to Moab. However, what I think happened out of Moab is the whole cross member actually shifted back because this was not that bad before. So it cracked, we must have hit something with a tire, put an additional load into the cross member, and we cracked that. Now at some point, this is going to continue to crack up, and we could possibly, this whole cross member could fall down, which would mean our transmission would fall down, our engine, this whole back thing would fall down. This side piece would fall down, which means our lower control arm link would collapse and our axle would roll back. It would just be a horrible series of events. So what we're gonna do is actually kind of support this mount to prevent it from cracking. We're gonna weld a plate on here and structurally brace it into our upper control arm mount or just weld it along the frame here. And one good thing, or I think a way to prevent this would be to have a skid plate that also incorporates over here, such as the gas tank skid plate. For example, our transfer case skid plate that I just installed, as you can tell, it actually ties into the Ford cross member mount here. So we have an added layer of steel and it ties in over here onto the frame. So this side's good. We're gonna have to fix that. If you're running something like this, I suggest crawling under your Jeep and not only checking the factory welds, but make sure you don't have any cracks in there. So now it's time to find a way to bend this back and weld this up so it doesn't happen again. But it sounds like I definitely have to throw some Frisbee first. So what I'm planning on doing is using this little bracket that I fabbed up here the other day. This is just gonna weld on there to fix the crack and give us a little more support. And then we're gonna use a little gusset just to weld onto that piece along to our upper control arm bracket or down here along the frame. I have a feeling that somebody in the aftermarket will come out with a bolt-on way to install this because really there is a threaded tab in the frame a few inches up that you could bolt this whole assembly onto. But welding this in place is gonna work for now, that way we can at least get this out on the trails. What I plan on doing is using this worn drill winch. This thing's actually pretty cool. It's a winch that's operated with your handheld drill. So I'm gonna hook it up here somewhere on the frame and then down there on the cross member to see if I can pull it up forward to where it should be and then we can weld the bracket on. And we should see when this 
start shifting that way. So I was able to use the winch to pull it a little bit, but unfortunately it just wasn't as much as I'd like. So what I think the best option is, is to take those bolts out of the cross member, clean that section up, and almost use the welding and heat to suck it in and draw it flush. So we'll give that a shot. So I'm gonna go support the cross member, and pull these two bolts out. By the way, if you guys are looking for a new set of gloves, that are pretty impact resistant. Check these out, I'll throw them in the video description. I think they're called uh, Free Two, and they're actually really good. They have the knuckle protectors. I've actually started to become a big fan of wearing gloves. I used to not like them. With everything cleaned up, this is how she sits. Now the next step is to tack weld this in place, but I'm curious to see if by tightening these bolts with this plate here, if it'll kind of sandwich it together and fix our misalignment issue. If that's the case, then we'll just you know suck it up, fix our misalignment, tack weld this, and then put our gusset in. So there's one thing I do want to point out. There's no fault to blame for the manufacturers of these uh, cross members. It's more of the fact that the factory just gave us such a thin bracket to even begin with. But, you know, so if you're like me and you're running a Barnes cross member like this or an Artec, any, any one of those, definitely check these mounts. But I think by the time we put a new gas tank skid plate on this, something that actually has some meat behind it, we should be good. So I'm just slowly tightening these bolts and it looks like it's, it's gonna, no, I think almost now we're gonna start bending the brackets. But let's just see what happens if we keep on going. I'm extremely confident with how this turned out now that we just kind of sucked the bolt in tight. You can tell like we didn't go too thick on the bracket to where it wouldn't curve with this natural bend of the bracket. I think this, you know, right around 3 16 is actually the perfect amount. We tightened these down, it curved, and it did for the most part get rid of that, uh, and, you know, kind of suck it back in. So now we're just gonna go ahead and weld a few spots on this and then grab our gusset and gusset it over here just so we never ever have to deal with this again. Last but not least, it's time to go ahead and weld this side gusset in. I decided to go ahead and do it kind of tucked up near the, uh, the upper control arm mount as well so it ties all in. Since this is not gonna be a bolt-on system for me, I might as well weld it so we have three points of contact. Those few welds right there turned out really bad, so I'm gonna have to grind those down. Might have to lay another bead over that, but overall, I think that turned out pretty good. And that should be plenty strong. And just like that, the rear cross member brace is finished up. So went ahead and painted it last night. Sadly, I ran out of my nice new Ace Hardware black paint and had to spray it with Rust-Oleum semi-gloss. So it's definitely not the prettiest looking thing under here, but it is gonna work. Now, one thing that I, looking back now, I think honestly, let's get out of here. I think we could just install that plate that we put on the cross member and put the bolts through. The way that it kind of sucked up came back together. I think that you could honestly just put a plate there with those holes oval out and bolt it on together without welding it and it would be enough support. Just adding that extra material to where those bolts are actually going through and clamping would be enough to kind of prevent this. So it's up to you guys personally. I mean, now that mine's welded, I know I'm never gonna have to deal with it again, but a lot of people aren't gonna wanna sit there and do all of that. But I would recommend crawling under your Jeep, whether it's a JK, JL, or JT, if you have a cross member under, under there that the long arms incorporate into, definitely check it. Even if you don't have long arms, if you have an older JK, go check your cross member because if you've been banging it on rocks over, you know, course of 10 years, definitely check it because I think this might become a pretty common spot for failures in the JKs, especially over the years once these frames get older. But that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully this will help somebody out one day in the future. That is gonna be it. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next week. But we do have a few things coming up. 
In the last uh, Cassie's video, she installed rock rails on the Bronco, which means we can finally get that out on the trails and test the Bronco. Uh, for the JT, we have a few more things coming up, but one thing I wanna ask you guys, uh, Cassie and I have been planning or kind of thinking of doing a meet and greet event uh, here in Oklahoma, probably at Crossbar for the first time, but I also wanna hear from you guys in the central United States, what are some must do off-road parks or some of the places that me and Cassie need to go check out? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching guys, peace.